Hey guys, Tim here, Big Dog Forge. Welcome back to the shop. So, been making a few knives lately and I've got a few more to make. And before I can send them out or get them out to people, I need to make some sheaths. Problem is, is my 1590 Singer sewing machine will do about three or four ounce leather. Not bad, uh, heavy canvas, that kind of thing. I need something that's going to do some nice, thick, heavy veg tan leather. And... Um, it, I need to keep it as inexpensive as possible simply because some of these leather sewing machines out there are incredibly expensive. So I've been doing a little research and uh, we're going to assemble a thing. Kind of a need a machine, build a machine kind of thing. So we'll see how this plan works out. Done quite a bit of research into what I'm looking at. I've not seen anyone do quite what I'm about to do. Close. But uh, anyway guys... Stick with me on this one. It should be a lot of fun. We'll see how this works out. We'll talk at the other end. Okay, guys, we're going to start this build here with a, uh, it's an old aquarium stand. It's got some steel welded to it. I was using it as a guide to cut some saw blades up. Sawmill blades. And, uh, where else would you start if you want to build a, a leather sewing machine? But with an aquarium stand, right? It's only logical. So we'll get all this old stuff off here. And we're going to modify this just a little bit. You're going to notice that I've cut the front legs out of this completely. We're going to make this a tripod so it'll sit on my uneven floor here. Alright. And we're going to build a little bit of a stylized front leg. Give it some little... I don't know something. I'm just going to wing it as I go here. My foot's going to come down about five inches. Match the back. And we'll be changing the back as well. And we've got this old piece of rebar. Get that into Seymour there. Let it get nice and warm. Alright. And scrapping the power hammer, we're going to go for it. What I'm going to do is taper both ends and fold this over in the center. And then from there we'll just sort of uh, uh, free form, I guess. And just see what we come up with. That we can wrap around the front of that aquarium stand and give it a leg. Got to give this thing some kind of style. Scrappy did a pretty good job of uh, tapering these ends down on this. This is three quarter inch rebar. It's left over from the Christmas tree stand build that we did. Somebody asked me when uh, I'm recording these things and I'm talking into the mic why I refer to as we all the time. Well, it's pretty much me in my shop other than my tools. You know, Scrappy, Floyd, Seymour. But the fact is, I'm taking you along for this journey, so we're doing this together, guys. There we go. And we'll get this thing back into the power hammer and draw that center section down a little bit. I want to keep a little bit of the industrial rebar look to it. I want to make this pretty rough. It just needs to be a leg, and I'm really just kind of having fun here with it, so... It'll be fun. See, so you saw my little drawing there on the bench. Sort of a Y-shaped leg coming up off the floor. So I'll bend a little foot into this thing. I'm giving myself a mark. Just about that 5-inch mark. And this will be our foot coming up off the floor. And this thing will sort of wishbone up towards the stand. And then we'll wrap those drawn out sections down alongside the stand. Maybe give it some waves or something. Maybe we'll do something fun with it. I don't know. Like I said, it's been a while since I've had a hammer in my hand. And I grabbed the big old Alex Steel three and a half pounder. It's kind of fun to use once in a while. 
Not really my everyday though, it's a little bit heavy for an everyday all day long kind of a thing. But it does move some material. Yeah, this other leg will get it into the vise. It gets a little bit quicker, 90 degrees. Straighten it out. All right, this thing is such a weird shape, it won't fit into the forge anymore. So we're just going to take a torch to it, and do our final straightening and shaping that we want. Put a little weirdness on it there. Just like that. Then we get this thing welded on. And like I said, it was for nothing more than just some fun. It needed a leg and I didn't want to just weld a, a peg on the front of it, so. All right. So leveling it off, we're gonna cut just a little bit off the back legs. And this thing's a little tippy. So we're going to spread that back leg area out and uh, widen the back end of that tripod so have a little more stability. This is pretty much just going to be fabrication. There won't be any forging on this half of this thing. And I could have done something much simpler than this. I could have uh, used an old wooden desk I've got for a stand for this thing or, you know, something like that. But that's no fun. And this is something I'm going to keep around the shop for a very, very long time. There we go. We'll cut those center legs off. And that'll give us a nice wide stance on the back side of that tripod. There we go. Okay, we get this guy out of the floor. And this is an old piece of wood that actually came off the bottom of a table. And uh, the machine that we ordered in to put on this bench it requires about an inch and a half standoff because it's got a little hand crank flywheel on it. So while I was building this, I actually got the machine in. And we'll take a look at that here in a minute. But it was... Uh, a little hairy there for a minute. I was going to start putting things together without knowing where everything went. Alright, give ourselves some screw holes here. Screw this top on. And we're going to get the surface rust and some of the loose paint off of it. And we've got some now it's rust inhibiting paint, the epoxy stuff. I'll give this guy a quick sand down. We're not going to do any finishing on him quite yet, simply because we've got a lot of work to do. And I don't know how greasy and dirty it's going to be. And you can see the oil stain on the back side of that thing or something. The screws in this thing just to make sure it was nice and stable. 
the aquarium stands can get a little wiggly. This one actually didn't turn out too bad. The extra steel we put into it. I think it's going to work out well. All right, so we got this box in. It's got a hole in it. And this came from, oh geez, eBay, I think. And this is a sewing machine. And the price on this thing was $120. And it's a shoe patcher. It's made in China. And I've seen lots of reviews on YouTube about this. Folks uh, using these things for all sorts of stuff. And that's a couple of pieces of veg tan leather. Now I had to clean the thing up. It had like cosmoline all over it. It was pretty dirty and greasy and gross and needed some adjustments here and there. It's a little bit of a finicky machine. But uh, by the time we're done with it, it's going to be uh, completely different. So it's got a hand crank on it. And I can't imagine hand cranking all this leather I want to sew. So we're going to motorize this thing. And I've seen a few other folks motorize these. So we got on the interwebs and started looking around for motors. And everybody that I've seen motorize these things has used like a motor off a sewing machine. Which would seem logical. But you're driving a needle through some really thick heavy leather here. And... Regular sewing machine motors just aren't designed to put out that kind of torque. So what I did is I said I went on the interwebs and I looked around. Alright, so this shaft that I have in my hand, it's got a big piece of bronze on the end. That's going to be the new drive shaft. And the area with the bronze, I'm going to turn that down to fit a pulley. And I'm just constructing the end of this thing, putting threads on it so we can put the nut back on to hold the flywheel on. There's a little alignment pin that gets drilled in. And I didn't show all of those steps. This video is quite long enough already. Anyway, so uh, we're going to turn the bronze end of this thing down to fit a pulley. And the pulley I'm going to put on, it's going to be quite large. It's about a 10 inch pulley. And we're going to do some gear reduction on this thing. There we go. And we'll turn down that bronze right there to the size of the pulley. Should be good to go. There we are. And that's our pulley we're going to use. It's going to protrude all the way down through the deck, so we'll have to cut a hole in the deck. And give ourselves some marks. And the motor will be under the deck, of course. So while we were on the uh, interwebs looking for a motor, I discovered the industrial sewing machine motors out there. There's some with clutches and there's some brushless motors with controllers and there's servo motors. And I really like the servo motor. About a 550 watt thing. They say it's a three quarter horsepower which sounds big for the size when you see it but uh, it's got a uh, speed control built in. It's reversible with a switch so I didn't have to worry about which direction to go. Um, it's got a built-in switch on the uh, cord leading into the thing. It's 110 volt, which is good. And it was $100. And I was kind of sketchy when I bought the thing because I'm making like, 100 bucks for all that. This has got to be, you know, there's just something wrong with that. But we went ahead and got it on order. And sometime during this build, it should show up. So say the Amazonians. There we go. We get our alignment pin in. We're a little out of frame there, but you get the idea what's going on. We're getting our flywheel back on. 
and there's a couple of bearings that fit in the cams on the back of that flywheel and you got to get them lined up just perfect there we go and we got the cams put on the back side got all the timing down and we get this pulley on this thing and we get it centered up in our hole we're going to end up taking this on and off probably a couple of times before we're finished with this. All right, so our motor came in. Duro electric motor. Like I said, it's 550 watt servo motor. And it comes with all sorts of goodies. Not a lot of instructions with it though. It comes with a bracket hanging under the table. It's got a uh, variable speed control to it. Goes from 600 RPMs up to 3400 RPMs. It's got replaceable brushes and foot actuated lever. There you go. And you can dial this thing way down. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that pulley out on the end though. It's a little bit big size wise because I want that gear reduction to be a little lower I want this thing to have some serious torque so that I can control that needle and where it's at so this pulley is about three and a quarter inches and I dug up an old aluminum pulley that I had that was two and a half and it's a half inch V belt which matches the 10 inch pulley I've got and I machined the back of it down so it would fit onto that shaft and the keyway just like the other pulley. So I had to make a little spacer because the threads were a little longer on that shaft than the pulley was wide. You get it good and tight there. All right. Now we're going to figure out where to mount this thing. So for the length of belt I've got and the throw in the adjustment on that thing, inch and a half thick piece of uh, wood. So we just took a piece of two by six and cut it down to fit the footprint. It's on that motor. And that'll get our pulley just about the center of that hole that we cut in the deck for alignment and I'm just going to align this by eye looking down through the deck get some marks on there and they sent this with some uh, nice carriage bolts with some rubber isolators and uh, some nice washers and nuts for mounting so uh, yeah it's quite the kit actually for a hundred bucks. So besides the um, argon and the wire and uh, a little bit of glue, the rest of this material is just salvaged materials. So at this point I literally have uh, $220 into this thing. And I think that's about all I'll have into it other than maybe some thread and those run about three dollars a, a spool depending on what you're looking for I've got some uh, number 90 thread and some number 20 needles needles a little bit big for the thread size but um, should work okay And this machine will take industrial needles or uh, regular, like a homeowner type machine, non industrial machine needles. Little adjustment. All right. And the shoe or the plate of this machine. There we go. will sit right over that hole where the bolt came through. So we're good to go.
All right. Let me get this guy on the deck. So like I said in the beginning of this, I have seen other people do this sort of, but they've all used a standard sewing machine motor. Um, and most of them have the issue with it wanting to take off really fast and not being able to control the speed right away. Although I've seen, you know, a couple of guys do a little gear reduction thing, that kind of stuff. But so far, this is probably the best answer I've seen for the money. It just, uh, I don't think there's uh, any, any better answer than this, to be honest with you. All right, I'm going to build some linkage for a foot pedal. And we're going to make it pretty simple. It's going to be a pretty simple thing. Don't need a lot of complex going on here. And just some quarter inch bolts there. And we'll weld those into place. A little linkage. And we'll put some nuts on these. I welded a bolt to this right to the side of the frame. So that uh, piece of linkage would just pivot. Pulls down on the other linkage, which pulls down on the arm. And I'm going to weld a little guide right in place on that frame for the foot pedal. And I made that foot pedal nice and small, so I wouldn't be tripping over it. A little return spring to carry the weight. There we go. Alright, let's get this thing into the shop. we got a couple of things left to do to it. We've got a uh, spool holder that I built because the one they send with it is super small. Alright, and we're going to build a removable flat table. This thing has an arm on it, but there's going to be an occasion where I'm going to need a, uh, a table for this thing. And I want to make it convertible, kind of you know, fit all my needs if possible. So again, this piece of scrap wood. And take it over to the voice crane bandsaw. That thing was a fun build. If you haven't seen that video, you should check it out. Where we rebuilt this bandsaw. It came in all busted up. A friend of mine gave it to me. And we rebuilt them and got them back into shape. Use it all the time. They just don't make them like they used to. All right, and this is going to be a pretty rough cutout because the casting on this lower arm is not perfect. So there's going to be some gaps and open spots, but as far as the table goes for this thing, it'll serve its purpose just fine. All right, get this piece of wood cleaned up. Got a couple of others. We're going to screw this cleat down to the table. And this is what our convertible or removable table is going to anchor to. I'll glue on there, a couple of screws. Alright, and I went ahead and assembled the rest of that table off screen. But it just pushes right down over that cleat. So that give me a nice flat table when I need it. Alright, we're going to grab some Veg Tan leather here. And we've got two pieces to start with, and we're going to add a third here in a minute. And the torque of that motor, the gear ratio between the lower and the upper pulleys is saying you have just complete control with it, and there's no lack of power whatsoever. So... Now that we have this guy, we are going to get down to Tandy Leather, pick up a bunch of leather so we can build some knife sheaths. So the next video will be me building a knife sheath for Ulf Peterson's knife so that I can get that shipped off to him. 
and uh, then I've got a few more knives after that to do and I need to put some sheaths on them as well so this will allow me to do my hats that I like to do and uh, various other things that I have planned in the future that will complement the ironwork. So there we go. Let's cut this in half and see how thick this piece is that we just sewed up. And I measured this out. Uh, three layers were right at three-eighths of an inch. A little heavy three-eighths of an inch thick. And that thing was sewing through it like nobody's business. All right, guys, there you go. Thing seems to work really, really well. I'm very impressed with that little shoe patcher machine. Um, it'll do up to about three eighths inch thick material without hesitation. And that industrial motor under there, uh, for the price of that thing, I could find all kinds of uses for those motors at that price. So uh, it's very controllable. It works really well. And uh, for Big Dog Forge, it's good enough. Like I always say, it's, uh, you know, if I can build something cheaper, that's what I'm going to do. And I certainly can't afford a six or $700 sewing machine for leather. But this, I could afford. It's going to get us moved forward. And then, uh, now we got to go out and get some leather. And uh, my family got me a bunch of leather working stuff for Christmas, so that's good. Time to go to Tandy Leather. There you go. All right, guys. Thanks for stopping by Big Dog Forge. Take care of yourselves. We'll talk to you soon. Remember, like, share, subscribe. Um, there's a link to the Patreon if you want to check that out. Become a patron of the channel on the front page. And uh, let's see. Is there anything else? Oh, yeah. Happy New Year. Be safe. Take care of yourselves. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.